Hello, welcome to Play Paul's Turn. In this podcast, we discuss all things to do with TV, films, games, and literature. We give our thoughts on the media we've been enjoying, old or new, and comment on anything topical. Our hosts today are myself, John, uh, Alex, and Bobby. Hello, boys. How are you doing? Hello, John. Hi, Alex. I'm good. I'm, thanks. I'm, a, I'm a little bit more perky than normal because I've been drinking wine in the garden because I'm on holiday. Um, and the weather is lovely here. How is it for you? How has it been? Uh, well, I'm in England as well, and the weather's great. Yay! It's Alex, hot, you're, but no, it's too you're hot. also in England. Yes, it's lovely. Um, and actually, it's cooled down nicely for our recording, which is good, because there's <laughs> nothing worse than being in a hot, sticky uh, recording booth. Um, we have our intro question today. This is our usual icebreaker. And this has been causing Alex some, some real heartbreak, trying to think about his answer. Um, I'm, I'm going to guess what Bobby's answer will be in a second. I'm pretty sure it's going to be, considering how many times he's written it on the agenda. <laughs> Um, but the question is, if you were a game, what game would you be? Uh, and we'll start with Bobby this time, I think, rather than Alex. Bobby, if you were a game, what game would you be? Uh, well, this is the first time I've actually heard this question. Because, uh, <laughs> there was obviously an update to the agenda that I was not informed of. So what game would I be? I really don't know. I could probably tell you what game character I would be. If okay, I was go a on. game character. Um, my avatar in cyberpunk because it looks a lot like me. Could you describe it? stuff. Describe it? No, because this is not a potty-mouthed explicit podcast. <laughs> so I well, hopefully he's wearing it. clothes. Yeah. Is he, is he, is he as uh, well-dressed as you are in real life, Bobby? Yes, but not wearing a suit, just wearing whatever I could you know, obviously conjure up and coordinate sure. within the game. I see. I always play female. I always play female characters in games. So uh, I never look like my avatar. Um, we'll talk about that. I don't actually. know what this is about me, really. Yeah, I won't jump ahead, but we, but we'll talk yeah. about that. No, look, okay. if I look, OK, gun to the head. If I was a game, what game would I be? I would be Street Fighter 4. Oh, Street Fighter 2. Street Fighter 4. I'd be Street Fighter 2. The arcade one. That sat in the corner of the chip shop in Thornton Heath. That's what I would be. <laughs> okay, that's a, 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 you, an interesting insight into your uh, personality, there, Bobby. I have you to can say. stick you can stick pound coins in my slot, and I'll give you fun all day long. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Moving swiftly on, Alex. What? Um, what? If you're a game, what game would you be? <laughs> yeah. So I thought about this because uh, it really. The thing is, I was like, "How am I a game?" And then I was thinking about. Um, the famous quote from Shrek uh, that I have layers, you know, because ho- ho- onions have layers. Yeah. So, um, and yeah, so I've gone for two and I think I'd be a, a mix of Paper Mario and probably something spacey like Elite. Um, and that's because, like, I'm a little bit understated. I, I'm a bit of a puzzler. I I enjoy my quips, but only some of them land, which is very true of Paper Mario. And uh, also, I've got the ability to take something that's vastly impressive and turn it into something really mundane, like truckers in space, which is <laughs> what Elite is. Isn't so. isn't that Spaceballs? Isn't that film Spaceballs? Truckers in space. Pretty close, yeah. So well, if you're Spaceballs, a film, you'd be yeah. Spaceballs. Okay. But but that's literally what Elite Dangerous was until the latest update was, you know, go from here to there, go back, go from here to there. And you could shoot people if you wanted, but if you didn't want to, you could literally just go go from one space to another to another. That's it. Uh, I, I was going to mention something about um, Elite, but I, I, I understand that Amy might listen to this, so I won't. <laughs> no, don't. No. Um, I I had the same sort of vex- concerns uh, about the... I could give you an answer. I kind of regretted asking after I asked it. Um, and that is... I looked at my personality. I, I like Bobby. I like gadgets and i like whatever i've got it's got to be the best and i like upgrading my gadgets um and i have a very fairly colorful outlook on life and uh, i i'm quite often inappropriate in my actions and my deeds and my words so i think the only game that really fits that explanation of lots and lots of different um devices to upgrade lots of color and lots of inappropriate comments is borderlands Ooh. um 
because it's the whole looting system and getting better and better guns. Or it could be any RPG where you upgrade your weapons. Uh, more of that later on as well. So I think it'll probably be any of the Borderlands. Probably some skinny guy with uh, one leg and a prosthetic um, eye with a slightly Australian accent is probably me in Borderlands because there's a few of those in there as well. Um, so... As you may have guessed, people who are listening, uh, our theme this week is about uh, video games. Um, so our topic this, this, this episode is, um, what are we playing? Uh, we thought we'd have a, a chat about some more recent games we've been playing, um, covering pretty much the remit over the last few weeks of our podcast. Um, no idea what we're going to do after this, Alex. We'll have to chat about that later <laughs> on. <laughs> but um, we, we've been having a think about what games we've been playing recently. Uh, obviously, we've been coming out of isolation and life has got a bit back, more back to normal. So time to play games has got a bit more strained. However, uh, I have said that perhaps over the last six months, what have we been playing that's really stood out uh, and found interesting? Um, so maintaining the same order as before, Bobby... Um, <laughs> I'm looking at the agenda here. There's a lot of repetition of one particular game. Um, what have you been playing? And and let's discuss what you've been playing because there's, there's some interesting games in here. One of which I'm really interested to talk about. Bobby. Uh, FIFA 21. <laughs> what a now, surprise! So yeah, <laughs> I have a lot of games on disc. And I like buying them on disc because once I've played them and got bored of them within two minutes, I can sell them very quickly and recoup some money. Um, but FIFA 21 I've actually got digitally for the first time because I do play the hell out of FIFA every single year. And it's just addictive. I don't know why. I, I never used to play online. I always used to play manager mode. And I played manager mode from FIFA 96 all the way through to about four years ago. And is then that, sorry, I started... is that like a single player thing where you control the team through its seasons and tournaments? Yeah, and so you become the right. manager of a team and then you, you know, do all of that stuff. Uh, and yeah. you just play against the computer AI every match. And then, you know, you win the league and you win this and, win, and then you get more transfer money and then you do it all over again. Um, so it was only about four years ago that I actually started playing FIFA Ultimate Team, which is the online mode. And um, in the last two years, I've actually got reasonably decent at it. Um, so where when I first started, you'd get what were probably 12-year-olds on the other end of the line whooping you like 20 nil or something. Um, I'm at actually now very competent. So, uh, so yeah, I... Uh, the th- the thing I like about it is that I'm really, really busy. Um, it's the kind of game that I can literally just jump into. If I've got 20 minutes or half an hour, I can just get in, have a quick go, do a bit of a brain dump, and then I can get on with the next thing in my life. Um, the, the the problem I've got with longer story-based games is I just don't have the time for them. Um, and probably my uh, attention deficit disorder thing kicks in as well that I just can't focus on on stuff whereas FIFA just to most people it's repetitive definitely to my wife it's repetitive her famous quote to one of my friends was oh, what's Bobby got these days gadget wise as he got one of those PS5 things and Carolina said yeah he did upgrade his console from a small black one to a massive white one um, but he I don't see the point because he just plays exactly the same thing on it um, but it for me it's varied because every single time you jump into an online match everybody's style of play is really different so you have the first 10 seconds is almost like a sort of you know chess game where you're just trying to work out the other person's rhythm and what type of player they are whether they're aggressive or whether they're completely useless um, and then you kind of adjust yourself accordingly and you settle in but yeah so uh, so there we go but I I've, have I've... Sorry, Sorry I was going. there's a lot of val- there's a lot of validity to games like FIFA that you can just play over and over again, and I think some people think they're a waste of money, but I think they're they're worth a lot because you can do that because they are that replayable. Yeah. I don't think you should knock that for what it is. So I think that's really important. Yeah, um, but I I have played Miles Morales because I um, obviously wanted to test out a next gen game on my PS5. Um, I haven't got past the first. <laughs> I don't even think it's the first level. I think it's like the first bit where you sort of learn all the moves and stuff. And I'm kind of stuck trying to get to the first 
mission thing where there's a crime happening. I just can't seem to swing my way out of that part of New York. But it looks stunning and I will go back to it. Um, but the reason I haven't gone back to it is FIFA, but also because I also installed The Amazing Spider-Man. And um, now when I, I have both of those next to each other in the PlayStation menu, and then I can't decide which one I should play, and then I just play FIFA. And I also <laughs> did... <laughs> I have played Ghostbusters recently, because that was on special offer in the PlayStation Store. And I love Ghostbusters, the movie. And I thought, wouldn't it be great to play that game? Because I never got to play it. And I did play the first two levels of that. And then I was just couldn't cope with the shoddy graphics. Um, I thought that if they were selling it on a PS5, it would look like a PS5 game. And it doesn't. It looks like a game from 1995. So um, I've given up oh, on that. Anyway, there we go. This I'm is the risk you take. Now. This is the this is the risk you take though with with um, remasters or reselling a game on a, on a better system because obviously on a PS5 with a, where where you're playing on a 4K screen, all of those assets get smeared out and look even worse. And so unless it's a proper remaster, you're going to get you know that you're looking at it through the wrong window, aren't you? Really, that's the problem. Yeah. I was going to ask you, the, your, your FIFA, are you playing the PS4 or the PS5 version? I presume PS5, PS5. yeah. And have you, PS5. Have you played the PS4 version before? I have, yeah. What um, are the differences? Uh, the graphics are just so much better. Um, and then you get all of the haptic feedback from the controller. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it, it, it's, it's more, it's sensory, it's visual, and it's touch. Are the, are the big differences uh, between the two versions. And then obviously because you're you know, running, the, the PS5 version is just buttery smooth, like the player animations, the ball animations, you know, even things like when they're running, like you can see blades of grass moving and their hair and all this kind of stuff. Um, yeah, it, it visually and in terms of touch with the haptic controller of the PS5, it's just, it's the best experience that I've ever had in FIFA in, you know, 25 odd years or whatever. I still, I still think um, that this, this is the PlayStation 5's biggest selling point at the moment, really. Whilst we've got less and less of the kind of exclusive, unique standout games, more are coming in June, I know. But um, is, is the, the, the haptic touch on the, on, the, on the controller, I think um, it makes such a difference in games. And I think it's a very clever uh, unit, sort of unique selling point that uh, Xbox are missing out on. I'm pretty sure they're working on a new controller. I would imagine they, they can't they can't get away with that for too they'll, long. They'll be working <coughs> on a, a Elite Gen yeah. Three, I think it is. Yeah. And they'll be working on that first, and then they'll go, "Oh yes, it has some form extra form of haptics." I mean, the Elite controllers are always the best controls of any console. Yeah. So they've, they've got to do something about it, and combining the haptic sort of style with all their extra removable um, peripherals inside the controller. That would be a, a, you know, a game changer. Mm. Um, I, I don't know how far you've got with Mars Morales yet, Bobby. Um, one thing I found... Not out of the training mode, dude. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've, I've, I've finished it. It's not as long as the, uh, the first um, Spider-Man game, but I liked it for that. I liked the fact it wasn't as long. Um, but just the fast travel. Oh, my God, it's a game changer. Literally... I mean, less than two seconds. You get, you get, you go from one place to other. So for jumping around the map and getting all your um, achievements, it's just a dream. And that's, I think, for me, the ones that was the main. This is next gen feeling I got from, you know, apart from the lovely the ray tracing and you know, you can zoom right in in the photo mode onto the individual kind of weave of his like his eye, his glasses, and everything else. Um, but that fast travel is amazing, and that's something I wish more of the upgraded PS4 games that you can now play on PS5 had. Something you still notice when you play, you, you kind of assume if you install the PS4 game to the PS5 drive that things would be quicker. They are a bit quicker, but obviously they've not been coded to be quicker, to take advantage of the SSD. Um, but that's something I think is a real game changer. And I presume you have a similar thing on the, um, the Series X, Alex. It's quick, quicker loading. <laughs> Kind of, um, yeah. I mean, a quick resume is the the key thing in the mm. uh, Series X. So basically, just um, load up the Xbox and then go. Oh yeah, I just want to play this game, 
and then you jump straight into it, which I know doesn't happen in PlayStations yet. They've, My, they've got, kind of got a, f- a fudge factor, haven't they, Bobby? There's a, a little icon in your menu, which is a Game Hub, and you can switch between like, the last three games. Right. But what, you'd really, what it's really doing is it keeps the shortcuts for the last three games, and, it, and you still have to open it from scratch. It's not oh, the same as Quick Resume. Um, I mean, that's qu- quite a useful tool, but it's not the same. Yeah, I, I think my question about Marvel's Morales fast travel is, does that take you out of the game? Like, is does the quickness mean that like it's easier and you don't feel like you've achieved as much, or does it just make the the whole experience more seamless? Um, the the game is designed to make you swing and okay. travel long distance, and I I do spend a lot of the game doing that. But it, I know if I've got to go and get something quickly, I can do it. Right. If that makes sense. Great. Um, but again, the game is not it's not a it's not a long fifty hour game. It's it's short enough that swinging around is is just so much fun. Mm. Um. It's such a, a great game, um, and it almost feels like it's been designed for older people with less time. You know, your FIFA <laughs> players who can't decide yet. It's Bobby, you've got to play it. It's an amazing game. And the story is so much better than the the original one, and I think Mars Morales is a much more likable character as well. Um, I see one more one more game on your list there. That I need to ask you about Bobby, which is some um, squadrons. So um, have you a little while ago, a little while ago, a game called Battlefront 2 came out, uh, which was the Star Wars game. And uh, that actually stopped me playing FIFA for nearly a year. Um, and I was just absorbed in that. I was playing the multiplayer. And again, I've never been a multiplayer type person. Um, I've always been, you know, I'd, I'd always got a game if it had a first person story mode. Um but I was just totally addicted to Battlefront 2, particularly the uh, galactic battles, you know, the, when you go in the spaceships and fly around. I was so good at that. I was, like, hitting yeah. number one every single battle. Um, yeah, if you come across my... Oh, you mean the original guys, Battlefront 2, Get then. out of there. Huh? So, I, I've not played the original... No, I did... I bought it, and then I tried to play the multiplayer... And uh, and it was on half, and I just got killed straight away. And I was like, "Oh, this is rubbish. I'm not playing this." Like my attention span. If I can't, if I, it's, I'm the same with tennis. Like within two minutes of playing tennis, if I hit a bad ball or someone aces me, then I'll chuck the racket down McEnroe style and I'll storm <laughs> off. <laughs> um, so anyway, cannot so be I'm, serious. <laughs> but they. EA stopped supporting and, and expanding the um, Starfighter mode, um, which was really frustrating because then you just left with the same eight maps all the time and it just got really boring, yeah. so I went back to FIFA. So when Squadrons came out, I was super excited, um, but it's a different learning curve to Battlefront 2. Battlefront 2 is more arcadey, you can just jump in and you can play it, whereas Squadrons is a much steeper learning curve for me anyway. I know that I think you've played it John because we were both banging on about it when it first came out. Um I've I've not yeah. got rid of it. It's still there on the shelf because what I do want to do is I want to play it in VR. Um but the problem is I put my VR stuff away and I can't be um yeah, and I just haven't been bothered to try and get it out. Yeah, I mean, it's coming to PS Plus next month, Bobby. So if you've got it on disc, sell it and then just download it on PS Plus. Um, <laughs> top tip. I, I, I've I played it only in VR. Um, I understand what you're saying about the difficulty curve. Um, I, I, I've I When I do drop in, I'm quite good at it because I've got to that stage now where I've unlocked enough of the, the extra perks for your ships, for your ties, uh, that... I can. There's a couple of weapons that you can compete quite competitively if you combine them. And I've done a bit of geekiness and looked at. You can go on and look at good loadouts. Um, so I really enjoy it. I really, really enjoy because it's very Star Wars. And it's very pure. Um, they did take some of the elements of the controls from the Battlefront game, so you still control your ship, your ship speed with the stick. They tried to be as pure as possible. I know what you're saying though. It's quite. A, it's quite a tough. Um, entry level for that game and I think maybe when it comes out on PS Plus it might be worth going back in and just grinding through the new noobs all these new players take out the, the you know and earn your uh, unlocks from, from that I I, um, I used to shy away from the dogfights which were extremely 
dispiriting because you just get shot straight away and die. I, I tend to use those now because they are so intense and cool. Um, I, I'm going to talk about VR later on because um, the, it's just when you're tired. I think you said it just a second ago. When you're tired and it's the end of the day, untangling all the wires and because I have to unplug my HDMI from my TV. I've got the original version without the pass through. So I have to unplug it from my TV and plug it into the back of the the processor box and I have to swap USBs around because there's just not enough bloody USB connections on the PS5. Um, so it's a faff. And last night, I, you know, I remember, last night I was playing some VR and it reminded me why I don't play it very often. I love it, but it's a real faff where you can just flop and watch that game in 4K. But I think, yeah, wait till um, it comes out on PS Plus. Drop in and just uh, suck up all the noobs and then get, 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 and just unlock some useful tools that make it easy to play because it's really good when you're good at it. It's yeah. really good fun. I will. It's a great little game. Alex, tell me about what you've been playing. Um, I've had quite a varied um, range of things that I've been playing. Um, one uh, one game that I can relate to Bobby in that I've barely started it and I can't get very far is I've been playing Outriders a little bit. Um, and I thought, Do you know what, I'm, I've not done first-person shooters for a long time, probably... I mean, I don't know if an Uncharted really counts because it's not really competitive. It's third, but, it's third person yeah, as well. Yeah, but, but, but the thing is, I've never, I haven't really done first person, and so I just mm. thought, Do you know, what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a go. I'm gonna start playing it. It's on and Xbox Game Pass. It was it? on Game Pass, so it didn't cost yeah. me anything, which was great. And I was like, brilliant. Okay, I'm gonna have a go at this, and it was really, really hard. And so I got like to the second uh, or third. Um, mission and i was just really struggling and i will come back to it but it's just i like i get that there's a learning curve but i need an easy level to help me get up to the level okay. that everyone else comes in at so i just I, I you know i'm a bit of a noob when it comes to those kind of games i, I had a play on it when it was a demo on playstation 5 um and i was quite intrigued by the story yeah, the storyline actually sounds quite yeah. interesting, and and that's what sort of I thought. Oh no, I could do this because it's you kind of they arrive at this new like uh, replacement for for Earth, and they're then, colonizing a new par- pl- planet, aren't they? Not that's parrot, it, a new pa- a new planet, and um, so they land on a new planet, and he's a mercenary, I think, and um, and then. Something it's kind happens. of a, a consultant mercenary, isn't he? Really? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're like they they are like. Um, uh, uh, they, they do the hire, first but, bits and then yeah. they get paid well and then they go. Um, but yeah, so I was like, oh great, you know that that would be that would be quite good. That sounds quite interesting. It looks lovely to 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 um, look at and actually even even playing is pretty good. I just need a, like a noob level that helps aim for me a bit. But that's just me. Um, and but the thing, yeah, it, it was really really nice. Um, I just haven't got further through it because I'm just not not good enough at the moment. So I've got. To if you've not, if you've not played it, um, uh, Bobby, have you played it? Outriders. Outriders. Yeah. No, I'm just so, looking at it. I'm just looking at it now. It's had pretty good reviews. Yeah, I mean, if you've not played it, um, I got big Destiny vibes from it. The, the yes. menu system and the character select. You know, you can choose three, one of three different classes. You're really influenced by that, like yeah, really and even the way the way you control the menus and move your like a stick cursor, and you've got to choose one of three classes, and then all your abilities and your ability tree is linked to that class, and you've got to kind of commit at the beginning of the game. I was lucky. I, I went for the pyro, and apparently that's the best one to commit when you're a beginner. Um, and I, I really enjoyed it, and I enjoyed the. Um, the style of the game it, it had a, also had a bit of a gears vibe to it as well with this kind of CPU tone yeah. fights in it and so on interesting idea they were plagued by real problems when it first got released with server issues oh totally yeah but uh, it, it, people it, were taking hours to get into the game and so on but I think it's calmed down now hasn't yeah, it yeah I think the thing is all of a sudden uh, uh, partly I think it's because there's, there's not many games out at the moment like in that genre yeah. Um, there's lots of people waiting for Halo, so they're like, "Oh, I can play this. This is awesome!" And so, consequently, it's just overwhelmed. But um, yeah, it's fine to get on now. And honestly, I don't think that it's it was like that bad from a bug point of view. There were a couple of bits, but it wasn't that bad. The main main thing was just making sure the servers could cope with the amount of traffic. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, no. So I tried. I tried that. I may come back to it. 
Um, I've got um, at the moment my comfort game is Forza Horizon Four, so that's game, that's something very a bit bit like Bobby's FIFA, but probably a bit more inane because I don't actually have to do very much. I just have to get in my car and drive a bit, and then go. Oh, that's fun, and that was it. There isn't there isn't really a game uh, like a, a any particular thing that's driving me there. It's just literally uh, oh, nice I just fancy going up and down the uh, up and down the road a bit. So, um, yeah, so that's been quite good fun. I've been playing a um, Breath of the Wild knockoff um, <laughs> called Immortals Phoenix Rising by Ubisoft. Um, and I'm genuinely really, really impressed by it. Like, like it's partly because I, I, I actually I found Breath of the Wild quite challenging once you get you get you get involved and you get to a certain level a certain point and then you really have to work to get through that bit um in breath of the world whereas phoenix is is aimed for a younger audience and and it's uh uh it's based on greek mythology isn't it yeah yeah it's yeah. it's based on greek mythology and um it's got like a cartoon style so it's a little bit like Fortnite. um but it, it's you know it's not that uh, challenging if you don't want it to be. So, like, my daughter could play it on an easy level um, and was always constantly telling me, look, Daddy, I completed it. I don't know why you can't complete it. And then I was like, you were on story mode. And then she's like, no, I still completed it. And I'm like, you were on story mode. <laughs> if you went up to, an, uh, like, a medium or, or hard level, it's quite challenging. It's not... You know, it's not impossible, but it is challenging because all yeah. of those lovely bumps that you get in that, that that first level. But no, my daughter just thinks that she's God's gift to gaming, and yeah, so she'll learn. Um, anyway, and one of the things that was um, interesting was they had DLC on it that was quite uh, quite good actually. So um, the first Did DLC, you have to pay for that. Yeah, you have to pay for it. Yeah. It's part of the season pass, or you could buy it individually. I ended up buying it individually because I was an idiot and didn't think that I might want them, and then ended up buying all of them anyway. Um, so one of them turns the game into a bit of a Diablo clone. Um, so it kind of mm. zooms out a bit, and the, the it becomes a bit isometric, does it? Yeah, 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 a bit like that. And so that's quite interesting. There's another one where it's all of the challenges because there's lots of um, it was shrines in um, it was shrines in um, Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild, but but in Phoenix, um, uh, those are kind of uh, gates of Tartarus, is what they're called. But yeah, so those those sort of challenge areas um, were what um, they doubled down on, and then they created another DLC. It was the third, uh, the second one that was. They basically created a completely two completely new massive levels um, uh, and completely new map um, based on China, uh, Chinese mythology. Ooh. And, you know, the story was OK. It wasn't great, but it was. But the fact that they'd gone down to that and gone, you know, yes, it's the same uh, mechanics, uh, but you've got a new character and you're in a new world. And, yeah, you've still got the same stuff to do. So it's still familiar um but a few things have changed so off you go um and i really felt like they built built on it really well apparently it's been really successful for ubisoft so i think we'll get us another one it almost sounds like they're kind of building expansion packs like world of warcraft did where they have kind of different worlds or themes each time yeah i mean it's like really add-ons. it's really clear that they like you know they, they've got a different studio to do each of the dlc um which is not unusual but it feels slightly different like it feels mm. like the china one uh, chinese one is really um you know really feels different has a different uh soundtrack uh different voice actors you know it's totally totally different so they really went to town on that and i think that was a lot better than you know hey we've got a few more levels um it's kind of it kind of reminded me of um oh my mind is going to go now the um i think it's called the outer limits is it oh yeah the one the one with um yeah so the the one from obsidian yeah it's just um, like a space corporation uh, colonist so they they did a similar dlc that i ended up playing um a murder on gorgon it was called 
and it's like a sort of detective thriller. Yeah, thing, and and the thing is, the mechanics were exactly the same. They hadn't changed anything. They just, but they they went to a completely new planet, um, and it was a reasonable size, and there was quite a bit to do, and it was probably about six hours of play or something like that. But I was like, you know, what? I'm happily will pay that for for that if it's worth it. You know, I don't mind paying for new content if they get it right. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, so I did. So I've, I've done a bit of a bit of a mix, and then I have a couple of um, more strategy ones. So the one that I like playing is City Skylines, which is uh, really good. My daughter's just getting into it recently, and um, yeah, City Skylines is just you know build your own city. It's um, an RTS game, isn't it? Basically, yes. Built on yeah. strategy. Yeah. Oh, do you know what? I really, 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 really wish I liked RTS games, but I could just never get on with them. I just don't have the patience. Yeah. But, you know, I, I used to play, like, in the past, the old Dune RTS game, mm-hmm. Dune 3000 and um, Civilization and SimCity, yeah. like the early games. And I used, but now I just don't have the patience for them. I just don't have the time. But I've played City, I've got City Skylines on Steam. In fact, my son's just been given a gaming laptop for his birthday. It's and, really and good. It's great. Because I've basically he's got my Steam account with all my games on it now, nice. so he's like, he's in heaven. And one of them is City Skylines, and I he, he likes building and planning and things, so he might like that. Uh, I found it quite quite um, hard to get into, quite inscrutable. Yeah, I think there's two ways of doing it. So you can either just turn the money on and create something that you want to make. That's yeah. quite interesting. I and think that's then, how I played it. Yeah, and I think that is is a good way. The other way of doing it is you just play the game with the money limits yeah. and you know you're going to have to build it a bit at a time but what what was kind of nice about that is that the game mechanics do support that so you can kind of you start off in a part of the map and the rest of it's blocked out so you can't you can't go to it yet so you just focus on that part and get that part working and then then you've got enough to buy another mm. area and i do think i do think they've done well and obviously um the cool thing about that is the DLC is, I mean, it's just prints money because it's literally. It's, it's like it's like they have like night, like a light. There's a nighttime DLC, wasn't there? Yeah, they've the got nighttime out, DLC. Yeah. They've got DLCs yeah. for uh, eco stuff. They've got DLCs for uh, trains. I think it is at the moment and stuff like that. But the thing is, you know, obviously they can be as complicated as a city. It's a bit like Sims uh, yeah. in that respect. There's a story um, behind that, though, isn't there? Yes. Because Sim City was it Sim City Four? They had real problems with its with its uh, implementation of its kind of uh, multiplayer city sharing or city connecting mm-hmm. mechanic, uh, and at the time everybody was so annoyed with it that people were kind of turned away from SimCity Four in their droves. And that is exactly when the team that made City Skylines released their game, and everyone kind of went to City Skylines, and it basically wasn't planning any of that DLC. But when it got so many so many people buying it, it decided to do the DLC as well. Yeah. They were very lucky. Their their timing was excellent, really. No, I think. it was great. And well, they had yeah. a they had a, um, a DLC that was all about disasters that was clearly borrowed from yeah. like Sim SimCity. You yeah. could uh, sort of see see they they'd gone. Well, hey, we can do this, and then went off and yeah. That, so they're doing they're doing really well. And then yeah. my old faithful is Elite, Elite Dangerous. Now um, I recently came back from like the center of the galaxy. Um, but I'm not really sure what to do now. And there's been a new update called Horizons. Um, is that a first person thing now? Is it? Yeah. So so it is it is first person. There's there's no third person view or anything like that. It's first right. person. Um, and it is very first person shooter. And I'm just off my game with first persons at the moment because I've tried playing that and I failed totally. So um, I think I need to I think I need to try again. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's changing it quite a bit because the ability but you can to get off your ship and run around, can't you? Yeah, now? the ability right? to get off of the ship yeah. um, as a person rather than in a buggy um, does change it quite a lot. And so you can go into the um, uh, compounds and uh, uh, you've got tasks to do. And it, it's often about, um, you know, infiltrating and getting data from here and then uploading it into a different place. But to do that, you might have to power on this and, and turn on that. And at some point, you're going to get caught and then you're going to have to fight your way out. And honestly, I think it's it's pretty well executed, but I don't think it's anywhere near a decent first person shooter. I think it's literally just 
a bit of an add-on, um, and Star Citizen are doing it, so they kind of went, well, yeah, and we No Man's Sky it. as well, really, aren't they? Yes, yes. I mean, I've, I bought No Man's Sky that came out and quite enjoyed it, but kind of fell off it a bit. But I, I'm, that's a game I might go back to eventually because it's looking very nice now. Mm. Wow, you've been very busy, haven't you, Alex? <laughs> um, on on and off. I'm not. It's not that yeah. I play a lot, but I I think we'll talk about later why I'm not. I haven't got any big things to talk about. But. Sure, yeah. I uh, I've just chosen three games to talk about because they're the ones that really stand out for me. I'll start off with the game I've less recently played, which is Returnal. I mean, I, have, I do I do dip <laughs> into it again. Um, <clears throat> I, I got Returnal because I wanted to have a taste of something that was a bit more next gen. Uh, it's PS5 only, um, and I played it like to hell for about ten days in a row. Um, and really, really enjoyed it. It's a lovely game. It's a roguelike. I'm not really a roguelike player, but um, I I like the look of it and the style. I do like sort of a bullet hell shooter. And I'm a really, really big fan of Housemark Games, who make this. Uh, they did things like Resogun and Stardust, Super Stardust, and this twin stick one that I absolutely love, but forgot what it's called now, which is a shame because. Oh, Dead? No, I've, I can't remember what it's called. It's a cracking game. I'll look it up later on. Um, I, I really like it. It's, it looks amazing. Uh, it's interesting. Very Geiger, HR Geiger kind of theme to it. Stories. I haven't got very far through the story because of the nature of the game. Um, mm. you, you, you basically, uh, the levels are randomly created every time you play. Every time you get killed, you start all the way, all the way back from scratch, which might annoy some of you. And that's what a roguelike is like. Where there are elements that you keep, like... Um, the uh, options for gun unlocks that you can find in game. So you find weapons in games and you can unlock extra features, but you can only find them in, in the actual levels. You can't go back to your spaceship with them. However, as time progresses, you can the unlocks you have are more interesting and more developed. Uh, and you can bring some currency back with you as well to buy upgrades and things. But the, the whole game is getting through to find this signal because you're stranded on this planet. You're trying to find a way of communicating back to your you know people. Um... And I have managed to make it through to the first boss, and that takes you to a kind of a Mars-type environment, like an orange, a red planet, dusty planet. Um, because the game is brutal. Uh, it's really hard. Um, and it's quite a punishing game because, um, you know, you start right back from the beginning after, after you get killed. And if you do get through to the second level, you don't then respawn to the beginning of the second level. You go right back to the beginning again. Oh, no. And so you've got to toy around with do I once you've killed the first boss the second level is unlocked so you can just go straight to the second level but then you're going in kind of underpowered so I'm finding myself going through the first level and finding all the unlocks and all the guns and um, parasites which are things that can help like augment certain parts of your body whilst at the same time punishing you other parts other features of your, of your outfit so it's kind of a risk reward system mm-hmm. um, it's really good it's, it's beautiful I love the gameplay, the jumping around, the shooting, and I've now got like a lightsaber I can use as well in game, which helps kind of open up other areas that you can't mm-hmm. normally open up. It, 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 you know, I've, I'm a big fan of Hades, and there's very similar systems where the more you play, the more things you can open and go into, and it's all about exploring. Uh, and I will go back to it because again, you can dip in and dip out like you can with FIFA. It's it's not a, you know, it's not a game that's like a single player where you have to keep going, keep going. You can stop. Um, but the thing I'm having at the moment is there's, there's some really nice games being released. Um, and as I said before with the gadgets, if, I, if a nice thing comes out, I have to have it. So this is the problem. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, I'll go back to Returnal. I will return to Returnal, sorry. Um, but I have recently bought the, the new upgraded, nice-looking version of Mass Effect, Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Right. Um, and I know, Bobby, you said earlier on that you haven't got the patience for long story modes. Well, the thing is, I've I've done all the story modes. I've, I've played it all the way through to the end. So for me now, much like rewatching all the seasons of Friends, I know what's going to happen. But it's kind of just lovely to go back and play it again after after I last played it in two thousand and seven to two thousand and ten. So it's been about ten years since I last played it, and I can remember bits of the story, <clears throat> like standout moments. I remember. But it's just so nice going back and, and meeting the crew and going back to the Normandy spaceship and playing around with the relationships and right, I ha- <coughs> who can I go to bed with this time? I didn't go to bed with last time. All these sort of different things. Um, looks wise, well, uh, Mass Effect One is the shonkiest looking of the three because it's the earliest one. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Um, but it's still lovely. I mean, they've they've done a really good job of upgrading, um, remastering it to 4K and putting all the new textures in. They've kept the, the the feel of the game. And there's been a few concerns about the lighting and how the lighting has changed in the game. It's kind of some people think it's ruined the mood a bit. Well, I don't really feel that. I, I the only my only concerns are that some of the character models are a bit funny looking because they've upgraded the textures without really upgrading the motion and the and the lip movements. So you can see they're quite old character models, but and in some situations, there's one character who's his admiral on, on the main hub citadel thing. His skin has this weird kind of coppery, silvery shine to it. Mm. Uh, he's a black guy, but they've, they've, I don't know what they've done with the lighting and his, his colour in his face, but he looks kind of like sort of C-3PO colour of skin. It's really weird. So there's a few kind of strange things like that, but I'm really enjoying it. It's, again, it's just it's like watching a, a, a favourite old film over and over again, you know? Um, and I'm very much looking forward to two and three, the because they are better, they were better looking games originally as well. Um, so that's really good. And then my last game that I've been playing most recently, I was playing some of it last night, is a VR game, and you can only play in VR. And that is a bit of a, a bit of a risk, a bit of an experiment. I um, it's only ten pounds at the moment on the PlayStation Store, and that is Solaris Off World Combat. Do you know anything about this game? This game, chaps. I've not heard not. of it. Right. So it's I. I've been pleasantly surprised by it, actually. It's it's from the people who made um, Firewall, which is the um, other kind of VR version of uh, Rainbow Six that you can play. And that's really good, because that's a tactical sort of S, you know, Black Ops type game with um, in VR. And I have, uh, to my shame, I have the PSVR aim controller, which is the light, the light gun you can use in VR, which is really good when you play in VR with it, because you're holding the gun. Uh, so you get the feel for the gun, and you can... You know, hold it and aim down the sights in game through whatever sights are given to you. But um, Solaris is a cross between Tron and Quake. Now, I don't know if you have, have you ever played Quake. You're probably yeah. too young. Yeah, you I've have. played Quake. Yeah, well, years and years a bit ago. Like, um, Doom and that sort of thing. Quake. Yeah, yeah. I think I played it on an N sixty four. Was it on the N sixty four? I think it might have been because I remember playing it in four player split yes. screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It might have been a PlayStation. Nintendo I can't remember. It was. I think I played on the on the sixty four in a mate's flat many many years ago, uh, in the early nineties, late nineties. Um, and the beauty of Quake is, and it's a bit like um, the Unreal Tournament, which I used to play loads of as well. Uh, is with Quake, you have no. There's no. Um, sorry, with Solaris, uh, there's no loadouts there's no choose there's no moats there's no choosing what levels you want to play or what maps you want to play you start the game and you're straight in there and you start off with a basic pistol and you've got to run around the map and pick up the guns so all the guns are like you know the floating weapons like you get in quake uh so everybody's on the same playing same level playing field you know you've got the same people playing with the same weapons and you just got to run around and pick these weapons up as soon as you can and it's all about capturing a zone so it's, it's basically like um domination or capture the flag but it's one zone really one zone and and being on that zone obviously you know activates it in your color um and there are proximity grenades you can pick up and there are um portable shields you can pick up and then health packs and that's it it's very very simple gameplay but it's all about and it's they're quite small maps it's all about running around at high speed and you can you can slide as well um, and interestingly, if you're standing up and you duck in the VR headset, then your character slides in the game. But there is a button for nice. it as well. Um, but it's 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 very quick. Uh, it's very frantic. Uh, by default, when you go in, your voice your voice comms is on, so everyone can talk straight away, which is a feature that I had in Firewall as well. And um, I've really enjoyed it because it's so immediate and so quick, and runs really well on the PSVR because you know. Uh, because it's Tron-like, you know, when things blow up, they're kind of like sort of shiny pixels, but it's it's a very nice-looking game. Um, There's elements of... Did you ever play Riggs when it came out? The kind of mech... mech No, no, I never did. It came out on PlayStation Plus, and it's kind of a combination between um, uh, Titanfall and Basketball. Uh, Well, this is... It has a similar feel to it with the the suits you wear and the helmets and the upgradability of the outfits, but, you know, it's, it's a very pure game, and it is really... It really leans on communication with your teammates 
and sticking together and planning ahead. You can't really lone wolf it. Um, and I've enjoyed it because so far, fingers crossed, I've had this been some really nice people, just very welcoming people who know when a noob comes in, right, here's how it works. Um, within about three or four games, I, you know, it clicked. I got what was going on. And you understand some of the tactics, like sliding is really useful. Um, I'm still a bit of a, an idiot with a gun, and I just kind of spray. It's a way my arm around. <laughs> you can see some players, because you can use the, the move controllers as well. And you can use a, a, a standard dual sense controller. Do you see? So there's a, whatever controller you've got, you can play. And I'm thinking some people are very steady with their aim, must be using um, <laughs> the uh, dual sense. So I feel like it's almost a disadvantage playing with a light gun, but it's so much fun. Um, I I had a bit of cash in my um, PlayStation account, so I think it cost me about six pounds to buy. So it felt like you know, just a little bit more than a London pint to play the game. It's mm, worth a good. gamble, but I've been really impressed with it, and I'll probably play more of it. Um, again, it's it's the block. The, the the big block is getting all the cables unwound and putting the headset on, which is my headset's slightly broken as well. The rubber band's gone on one side. Um, but I was toying with the idea of buying the new one anyway because those new controls look, look really cool. The new uh, kind of Vive star controls that oh, Sony are bringing out. Um, are they going to so bring I'll, out a wireless version of the? I don't think so. Are. I don't oh. think so. Not not this rate. I think the newer one won't have the. Um, so the current PlayStation VR has the um, like a little unit, like a little sort of. Um, CD Walkman sized yep. uh, block, which does a lot more of the, of the the processing for the for both of your eyes, mm-hmm. which the PS4 couldn't handle. But uh, and I, I'm amazed so far, by the way, that Bobby hasn't actually had a, had, had done his PS5 brag yet. Yeah, yeah I did. Um, Bobby, did you? Yeah. Oh, I must have missed it. Maybe I've become desensitised to it. I always okay. get it in within twenty <laughs> seconds. <laughs> so both Bobby and I are fortunate enough to own PS5s, and the PS5 can cope with the headset being plugged directly into it. So it won't, ha- it won't have that external unit. Right. Um, and it will have path through, so I won't have to keep unplugging and replugging it in as well. Mm. So I think I've got so many PSVR games that I still have to carry on playing that I'll probably down the line invest in. I came very, very close to buying an Oculus 2 um, because John Lewis is selling them for like 80 quid off at the moment in John Lewis, which is the 220 quid mark is almost, you know doable really um, just to so try out the wireless with, VR what do you do with that plug it into a PC no no the, no no the Oculus 2 is a standalone so it has a I think it's on either an Nvidia or a Tegra I think it's an Nvidia yeah. graphics with, with a Tegra chip in it yeah that's right so it's a standalone unit it comes with the two controllers the headset and nothing else it's completely wireless and it's all all the games are stored in the headset and you can get a 64 gig and a, hundred and, a 256 gig unit um, and the games were pretty good on those, you know. In fact, Solaris Offworld has been dual released at the same time on PSVR and on the Oculus Quest Two. I'm not on Facebook, so I can't use one because you have to have a Facebook account. I mean, I'm sure I could get work, I could work around that, and, but um, I was tempted to get one just to try it out. Uh, it's a lot of money for a gamble, though. Bobby, have you got any other VR games that you've been playing recently? Have you kind of, apart from Squadrons, dropped off on that a little bit? So I think you really go to these days. I put the put the VR away when I got the PS5 uh, which was when uh, launch day <laughs> um, <laughs> and I, I just had so you never got the um, the camera adapter for it then so you can't you... I got the camera adapter um, you have okay. so yeah no I can totally use it I've got the uh, HDMI box debris thing as well but yeah. you know like you say I just haven't got time and the fact it's just such a faff, you know, untangling the cable, moving part yeah. of the coffee table out of the way and all of that stuff. I just can't be bothered. And I think my move controllers are probably out of juice and I can't find a charger for them because it's a different USB thing. It's the old one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, I, I will I will get back to it, but um, maybe when our house is finished being refurbed and I've got my dedicated gaming, viewing and listening room. Rick. Oh yeah, yeah. See, my my daughter's um, very keen to use it, and she's not yet twelve. And I've been very unkind to her and said, "No use to your twelve because 
there's, there's, they've not confirmed yet whether VR does any damage to children's eyes in terms of myopia or anything. So they've said 12 years old is the minimum age you should be using them. And her birthday's coming up in a couple of weeks. So I have promised her that when she goes 12, she can use the headset. So I've kind of kept it alive for that more than anything else. Um, but I do enjoy it. It's, 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 it is another depth to, to, to playing games. Um, so I will probably will get the new headset when it comes out. Um, but we'll come to that in another podcast, I think. Mm-hmm. Now, speaking of buying things in the future, like buying headsets, um, there are ga- you know we have now got, I think June's going to be the month where we start to see more games coming out. The summer is kicking in. Um, so there are some games that are coming out. Uh, what games are you looking forward to, Bobby? Um, apart, from, apart from FIFA, of course. Well, that comes out in October. Um, John? So... <laughs> Oh really? Is that uh, FIFA twenty two then? Uh, that will twenty one twenty. That would make sense. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And w- will it be any different to FIFA twenty one? <laughs> uh, yeah. Who knows? Um, People you know, will I move. Think That's hardcore right. FIFA game is just accept that it's an annual upgrade. Basically, you just pay your fee yeah. and you get on with it. Um, <laughs> if you play. FIFA Ultimate Team. Call of Duty players, I guess. Yeah, yeah. if you play FIFA Ultimate Team, you, you have to do it. Um, but anyway, um, I'm sick of talking about FIFA now. Um, so I'm probably not going to do much gaming over the next few weeks because the Euros are starting next week. Um, sure. So for as long as Spain are in it, I'll be occupied with that. Um, I have also downloaded... Uh, sorry downloaded i've gone through my stash of games that are still shrink wrapped and i've just reinstalled um uh what did i reinstall guys you guys know because i sent you a screenshot injustice 2 oh yes um and gta 5 is on the coffee table and i'm gonna install that because actually i really loved um the previous gta games is it even gta 5 have you played gta 5 I played like the you first. Must have played it. Um, and uh, I played like the first five, ten minutes or something, and then I got distracted. What the, the the actual story, the actual campaign? You mean? Whatever. I don't know. It was like five years ago. <laughs> well, yeah, that's that is, GTA Five. That's that's a cracking game. I I I've played it to completion. I really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was I, a good game. I, enjoyed, I mean, it's, uh, it is the world's biggest game at the moment. Well, the last GTA game I completed was Vice City, which I completed on the PS Vita. Oh, lordy. Uh, wow. John, for uh, all you listeners who can't see, John's got his head in his hands and he's literally crying now. He spent all day I mean... on his day off. <laughs> Teachers have it very hard. They do have it very yeah. hard. That's not a flipping comment, by the way. But he's been enjoying no, his I day know. off, drinking wine in the garden, and uh, and I've just taken the jam out of his donut. Not um, Not playing games, actually. But, okay, so it's going to miss the summer, but the because it was meant to come out in April, but I am really looking forward to Far Cry 6 because Far Cry 5 was the game that I played the most when I had my Xbox X, whatever it was called. Whatever the last good Xbox was. Um, and if, when that comes out... So I'm, re- I'm, <laughs> I'm super looking forward to Far Cry 6. I've heard that it's cross-platform, so you'll be able to play online with other people who are on different consoles. But I'm not sure how that works. Right. Uh, it may well be that if the Xbox Series X, or whatever it's called, is back in... <laughs> <laughs> whatever available. that box is called yeah whatever the thing yeah but their naming convention is so convoluted it's like the xbox it series is very confusing. Confusing. That's fair. xbox series s xbox what did i have last time the xbox x one terabyte and then the xbox yeah, series x xbox why one can't x. they just give it a number no it's the one x it was the one x and then, so the, the one then x. they went xbox series x xbox series. so anyway if I can buy an Xbox Series X easily in October, when Far Cry 6 comes out, I will probably buy the Xbox Series X and Far Cry 6, and I will have an Xbox set up, because I've got friends on Xbox who I can't play with anymore, um, and right. I don't really care about that, but for this game I do, because <laughs> Far Cry 5 was just so much fun, apart from the cutscenes, which were really boring, but I just love that running around shooting stuff, you know, 
going and looting other towns and kicking the hell out of people that you just drive by. I love all of that sort of thing. I should actually probably just go and is install it... GTA tonight. Yeah, I mean, is uh, at the moment, Far Cry 5 um, is £7 in the sale. Is it worth getting for £7, Far Cry 5? Definitely. The full game. Definitely. Oh, in fact, actually, I mean... if it's 7 quid on PlayStation Store, I'm going to download it tonight. <laughs> But it's definitely worth a go. In fact, actually, uh, I, me and you... No, 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 John, I really, get it. I'll get it. Me and you can play together. Yeah. yeah. We can actually team up, so we can be two... So That'd you have to funny. go after all these rednecks that are... Um, uh, yeah. I can't remember the storyline. But anyway, we can just go and loot and take over other towns. It, basically, there's this cult that's taken over the this America or whatever... And then yeah. you basically team up with other mercenaries to go and uh, liberate all these towns and stuff. But honestly, it's so much fun. Like, it really is. There was one... Well, me and my I'll friend, give it a punt. Me I'll and my friend punt. Ev, who, since I got rid of my Xbox, he's now left on his own, and he just plays that Elite Dangerous rubbish all the time. Whenever I ring him, what are you doing? Don't call it rubbish! Yeah, whatever. Well, I wouldn't play it all uh, the time. I think I'm, he's, I'm, he's got to have a life outside of that. He's like, what are you doing? I'm oh, making an omelette while um, I'm just flying to some place 20 light years away. What? How boring is that I told game? you. Anyway. Was he an autopilot? Space so truckers. That's what it is. So, so Bobby, I I played Far Cry 4, which is the one in the mountains in sort of like Tibet or India somewhere. Oh, I really enjoyed right. that. Okay, yeah. I think but I, I played it... Because I think they Ubisoft do a thing, don't they, where they offer you keys. Mm. So you can play, a friend can take that code and he can download the full game and play for a limited time. So I owned it and I gave a key to, a, back in the days where I used to do, used to do YouTube, gaming YouTube videos, we did um, a whole section of flying around in those kind of like those uh, micro light things they had in Far Cry 4, I don't know if they're in Far Cry 5. And it was a lot of fun with another player. I really enjoyed it. So I'd be definitely be up to play a bit of Far Cry 5 with you. It's yeah. Seven pounds. So uh, and it's a PS4 game, so I can whack it onto my onto my external drive rather than my PS5 drive. Yeah, I mean, it. just to give you one, I mean, we should have been on Twitch with this, but you know, you can pick up um, different things like parachutes and guns and stuff like that. Yeah. So there was one bit where we had to go and get this aeroplane because the aeroplane was needed by the resistance to go and bomb something else. And we managed to find the aeroplane in the hangar, so we killed everyone. But then... Um, nice. Yeah, but then another... Like, they sent some more people over to come and kill us, because obviously, as usual, I, I didn't go around very stealthily. I just ended up blowing stuff up and drawing too much attention to <laughs> yeah. us. So we had to leg it into the plane, and then we got in the plane, and we went up in the air, and then they sent some helicopters to, to shoot us, and then we were on fire, and we were about to crash... And then Ev said, quick, eject, and use your parachute. So I ejected, and yeah. I saw him in the sky somewhere else with his parachute floating down, and I'm going through my inventory wheel, and I don't have a parachute. And I said to him, oh. I haven't got a parachute. Like, give me a parachute, or come and save me, because I'm used to him saving me by this point when I get shot to, to, to pieces. <laughs> Um, and then I just flopped and I just exploded into tiny pieces and I died. But it was it's, very but it's the emergent gameplay that's, that's the best bit of that, those games. I mean, yeah. Far Cry 4, uh, I like the fact you could just bimble about and do silly things. And in fact, I actually did a series of videos on YouTube called the ABC4 of the Animals of Far Cry. And, my, and the, every video um, was me wandering around the world trying to find a specific animal from all the species that were there and you could you could um categorize them because they had like a it was a, it was a trophy to get all to kill all the animals but i had to kill each animal with just with c4 and so all those videos are me trying to find that animal on the map and blow it up even the rare animals like the salamanders i'll tell you what's really hard killing an eagle with a blink and c4 up in the sky really hard but i managed to do it i'll see if i can find the links to those because um, i did a little montage of all the animals i killed at the end of the um, season um and I, you know, there's a. I think that's what's great about the Far Cry games is you've got this kind of eminently twitchable kind of content where you can do all these crazy, silly things. Mm. Uh, have you seen any previews for the new game yet, Far Cry? I 6? have. Yeah, if you go on YouTube, I was actually. I think I messaged it to the Slack group, or maybe I didn't. But if you go on YouTube, they've done a showcase reveal, um, the same as they've done with Horizon uh, Far West or whatever it's called. 
uh, go and watch it. It yeah, looks Forbidden incredible. I, I honestly can't wait for that game. Uh, so yeah, so it's all about Far Cry, Far Cry Six for me because yeah, it's nothing. I'm kind of interested in Resident Evil Village though because I've heard really yeah. really good things about it and I've heard that graphically it's the most gorgeous looking game on the on next gen. So I might just give that a go. Anyhow, I'll probably whilst, stop. Whilst you've it been talking, I... Bobby. Whilst you've what? been talking, I've just bought Far Cry Five. Oh, oh no. you've done it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, already I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll get it on mine I, I was going to ch- I was going to check and see whether it was on uh, Xbox uh, Game Pass go on do it Alex well three of us could play cross play then go uh, on, can do we it. yeah I know, oh, can that we might Far Cry 5 Google it. Um, I don't know if you can do it across on, on Far Cry 5 I don't know if you can actually let's have a go we'll find out we'll so, find yeah, out so, listeners so but not right now <laughs> uh, future purpose purchases for me in summary will be um, an Xbox Series X Far Cry 6 yeah. Um, and, and the reason, the other reason I want to get an Xbox Series X is because I do miss Forza. I really, yeah, really miss. I do as Forza. well. Um, and I prefer it to Gran Turismo. Um, so, I do as well, actually. Yeah. It's more accessible. See, I, I, I have still, I have still got an Xbox One X, so I could be tempted just to go and buy a Forza for a bimble. Yeah. Um, because I think every so often it comes down to twenty quid in some yeah, of the sales, does. anyway. Um, so it's worth waiting until then, Bobby. Um, yeah. Alex, what are you looking forward to? So my list terms of the next games? is fairly short because I own an Xbox. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm waiting for Xbox um, Xbox exclusives, uh, and I don't think there's going to be any until 2022 at the moment. So um, I think the one thing. So I I did order um, Cyberpunk as soon as it came out. Yeah, I played it a couple of times. It was so bad, like there were so many graphical glitches and and gameplay problems. I just put it down, and I was just like, no, I'm just not going to play this uh, until they 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 can come back and do another. You know, try harder and tell me mm-hmm. when you're done, and then I'll play it. And now it's been long enough that I could happily play it. So I I did play like a level or two, and then I was like, no, I, I want the next gen version of this because. That's probably the the only thing that's going to put the shine back on it. Um, yeah, I mean, I've played about twenty hours of it and um, really, really, really enjoyed it. It's right, right down my street. That sort of game, but uh, I've got to a natural kind of big um, story arc pause mm-hmm. with it before moving on, and I kind of want to wait until, like you, until. Um, CD Projekt Red actually release the PS5 upgrade. Which is going to be free, yeah. Um, and I would imagine it's going to be around October, November time when that happens. Yeah, they I say think. November, and yeah, and I I think if they, because what I'm hoping is they fix enough of it, do the things they need to from the next gen point of view, and then round out bits that they always wanted to do but they didn't yeah. have time to do, and and I mean that's what that's my hope. I don't know if they'll get yeah. all of that done by November, but it would be nice to be able to say. Like yeah, I know it wasn't quite ready then, but we had a deadline, and now Investors. it's it's yeah. what we intended it to be. So because Bobby used to own this game, listeners, if you're new to the podcast, Bobby used to own Cyberpunk, uh, and you, I mean, it was interesting you going through that process, but you actually managed to get a refund, didn't you, for that game? Yeah, that right? I sort of just out of curiosity. Did I you buy it digitally? I bought it digitally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I can't mm. remember what I did with the refund. Probably bought FIFA points. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's interesting because uh, at, at present, um, CD Projekt Red don't know when it's going to come back to the PlayStation Store. They're, they're... So I, I think probably it, what will happen is, is when they release the PS5 upgrade, it will be a multi kind of re-release like fanfare. You can get it on PS4 that with uh, and it's playable. Yeah. Uh, or maybe maybe they'll maybe they'll just say PS4 Pro or above. I don't know. Um, I can't see that happening. And they'll probably release the PS5 update and go, well, look, it's all better now. Everyone, please love us. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's made them lots of money already. Oh, More, yeah. You know, they, it's paid itself off, but it's not, that's by the by, really, because what they, you know, they, they've missed out on the opportunity for the extra stories that you could get from DLC, like they did so well with The Witcher 3, you know, with the Wine and Blood, was it the Wine and Blood DLC? Yes, that's and, right. Um, so that's my hope. Um, yeah. Anything else? Yeah, the only other thing that I'm... 
Um, yeah, I am interested in Far Cry 6, so I might I might yeah. have, a, have a go on that. Um, the only thing that's really intriguing me, which I'm, we're going to find out about some point this month, is um, Bethesda's new Starfield um, uh, space genre game. And I've not heard of this. That could so it's it's only been talked about. It was talked about in 2018, and then Bethesda was bought by Microsoft, and then there was a big hoo ha because everyone was like, "It was never meant to be an exclusive game. It's probably going to be an exclusive game now that Microsoft owns it." It's a big, it'd be Game Pass, won't it? Yeah, it'll be on Game Pass. Um, but the thing is, it's Zenimax it, they bought, wasn't it? Zenimax. Zenimax, company, yeah. But, Zenimax yeah, is the yeah. holding company that includes yeah. ID and well, lots yeah. of lots of them. Um, but yeah, the thing that intrigues me is it, it's it sounds like it's not it, it's trying to be to have a defined universe and have um, uh, stories within that, and there will obviously be a combat element and all of that kind of stuff. But it, it, if it's if it's um, limited in its scope enough, then I think it I think it would work. So I think that's the bit I'm interested in is to see what their spin on it is. So, yeah, that's that's what I'm interested in. Other than that, it's pretty bleak for the Xbox. I just got to keep <laughs> keep waiting. But never mind. I mean, we have. I mean, to be fair, there's lots of games to still um, play. To be fair, I mean, yes. I'm, like I say, I've got a backlog. I I I I am looking forward to. I have actually, and I'm sorry because I am the root of all these problems. <laughs> uh, I have already pre-ordered Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. <laughs> um, I I got very annoyed with the at the Sony hack a few years ago so I no longer store my details on on the PSN my bank card so I buy vouchers yeah. and what I tend to do because now I'm paying for realms for my son as well I whack a bit of cash on every month whether I'm playing games or not so when a nice game comes around there's just enough in there for me to buy something so I have pre-ordered it because it does look absolutely stunning and I think I think it's going to be the one that everyone goes this is next gen this is amazing yeah. you know fingers crossed um, so yes, looking very. I mean, I played all the Ratchet and Clank games uh, on both the PlayStation and the Vita. Uh, I am very much looking forward to. Uh, I probably mentioned it earlier on. Uh, the Horizon Forbidden West looked amazing as well. I love that first game. It's one of only three games I've ever platinumed, um, and the story I loved, and it left it hanging with more to come. So, have you? Have you? Have you both of you played that game? I. Believe I own it and it's still shrink wrapped. <laughs> Play it; it's amazing. Play it; it's really good. I I um, want to get it, but um, I don't have a PlayStation, so yeah. I might get it on PC because yeah. I could I could play it on PC. Yeah. Really worth playing. Um, yeah, uh, and my only concern was that Aloy looked a bit a bit different, and it felt like it wasn't the same character. I think they've she looks more realistic, which I think is half oh, the problem. Right, but then, to be fair, most of the game you won't see her face because you'll see the back of her head, won't you, when you play third person? But mm. um, yep, yeah, looking forward to that. Uh, very much looking forward to Overwatch Two. Overwatch is my FIFA game. Bobby still sees me playing it every so often. I I dip in whenever they have their events so that I get all the costumes, the skins, because um, I'm pretty good at overwatch so i can get in there and bang through all the uh, challenges fairly quickly to get the skins that's good um so yes i'm really i mean i, I don't know when that's going to come out whether it's even going to be 2021 at this rate i um, think it'll be 22 yeah uh i'm hoping that's going to be ps5 only but i doubt it will be overwatch is the Probably, legendary yeah. edition of overwatch is only 16 quid um on playstation yeah. store yes. i might just take a punt on that just to play something different. it's a good game yeah, it's a good game. It's it's a it's a very uh, good uh, low bar to entry MOBA without all the MOBA trappings. So it's very much a squad based game, but it's just so much fun. And, and it, again, so many um, very few games like that have emergent gameplay. But you can kind of, in fact, half the time when these emergent games play things come out, um, Blizzard have to um, kind of patch them out because people discover all these little sort of exploits. It's really cool, but it has its own. Um, like lab, you can make custom make games, and some of the stuff that comes out of that, like you can go into these uh, uh, servers where the floor is lava. You can't go below a certain level because it's filled with lava. And there's games where you just play Lucio Ball, a character who's like a Brazilian footballer. And it's all playing football like like uh, Rocket League. So there's some really cool stuff in there. Very imaginative. Very much looking forward to Death Loop. Uh, that's definitely. I mean, I'm a big arcane game player. I love Dishonored games, uh, and I like Prey as well. So I'm, you know, the Death Loop. I love the sort of the kind of roguelike time loop thing as well. 
Cane and Bridge of Spirits looks really nice, and it doesn't look too expensive as well. So that tells me it's probably going to be a shorter game, which is always a big draw for me, shorter games I can play. Um, and we haven't mentioned much about Switch. Uh, uh, that's right. So um, there is um, a game coming out that my son wants that I'm looking forward to playing with him, which reminds me a little bit of Little Big Planet, probably a bit more standard, and that's called Game Builder Garage. And the, the Nintendo releasing a game that you can build your own Nintendo Switch games in the game. Nice. Uh, and he loves, you know, he, he likes Mario Maker, making his own levels of Mario Maker, and we've made some stuff together on Little Big Planet. Um, dreams he found a bit too hard to use. But I think Game Builder Garage, and it's quite a good price too, it's going to be about £26 in the UK, so about $30. It's a good pr- entry entry price. I think that's going to be a good game to play. And then finally, a game I already have on PC is Solitaire Conspiracy, which is a, a game for one of my favourite developers, Biffle Games, who made Thomas is Alone and Volume and uh, the John Wick game, which I enjoy. And that is basically, it's a card game, Solitaire, with a bit of a twist, kind of an espionage um, slant to it. Yeah. And I always buy his games on PC to try them out, but I always buy them again on, on Switch because they're, his games are very much kind of portable games, without, but with a, a desktop vibe to them, so they're, they're highly polished. Mm. Um, I've zoomed through those because I'm aware we're running a bit long here but I think um, June is going to be really good for games uh, if you're a PlayStation player anyway um, Alex, fingers crossed uh, for Halo There's, I think we're we're approaching by the time you listen to this Halo may have already been announced at E3 uh, we're in E3 month, months uh, I think E3, E3 is so long that it goes on until August But yeah. um, so by the time you listen to this Halo may have been announced Halo Infinite, is that right? yeah, that's right and I presume it's going to come to Xbox Game Pass. Yeah, that'll be on yeah. Game Pass from day one, and and I think so, that'll be good. Are you are you a Halo fan? I I I was, and then I got out of it, and I've got to get back in. It's the first person thing. I'm, what I need to do is maybe give myself some goals and yeah, that are achievable that I to just force me to play it till I get it good enough again. Okay, well, the, if you get Overwatch two, Overwatch as well, yeah. Because we can play cross-play, get you to a bit of first person from that, and we'll play together, and then you'll be ready for right. uh, Halo. All right, we'll do that. <laughs> How about that? Um, I think we're going to... We have lots to talk about, but I think we're going to have to save it for another podcast. Um, there's lots going on with games. Uh, we are all old and don't get much time to play them, but we will talk more on other podcasts about this, because I think it would be nice to do a little bit of um, a chat about the new Switch, which has been rumoured, and it would be nice to kind of follow up E3. Yeah. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Um, uh, Bobby and Alex, uh, remind me how we can find you on Twitter. What are your um, Twitter handles, Alex? Oh, I'm Alex Hansford on Twitter. And Bobby, I've written yours down here so I can remember it, but go for it. It's at it's, Is that correct? At it's Bobby Revilla. Okay, that's good because that's correct. I'm at John PR Evans. You can also find us uh, at Play Pause Turn on Twitter as well as our website, playpauseturn.show, if you want to listen to the um, audio directly from the show, from the website, I beg your pardon. Uh, this has been Play Pause Turn, and thank you for listening. <laughs>